a bright strip. Watch it unrolling steadily. 20 miles of it every day, 100 miles each working week, into the greedy jaws of the crimping press, where at every stroke, six corrugations are made. What is the destiny of this ribbon of quivering brightness? Let us follow it and see. As the lively strip moves on, it is accurately cut into separate lengths. Each end is prepared with a confident touch. The center of each length is now planished or prepared for folding. Quick work, but wait. The ends of the strips are secured and pressed together to form a continuous loop. Here truly is amazing speed. These are now assembled and the muster carefully counted. 55 and all correct to make, well, have you guessed? A radiator, of course. Within the loops, fins are then inserted. Making them ready for the soldering frames. The whole assembly is screwed up tight. When the solder sets, this complex assembly will be an Austin radiator, just like the radiator on your own dependable car. assembled block is being soldered, dipped first into the flux and then into the solder bath most carefully. Here we see the stately dance of the tinsmiths. First one side and then the other is sealed and the solder hardens as the block is held firm under the press. So this unvarying ritual goes on with barely a pause. Now the ends are soldered so as to complete a rigid block built up from over 100 yards of strip. While the soldered block passes through the washing machine, there is time to explain how the cooling water finds its way through this metallic maze. Between each pair of loops, a water space is left, three thirty seconds of an inch in width. Through not less than fifty-four of these channels, the water flows from the top to the bottom of the block.
From a wash in hot water and a swill with cold, the radiator emerges clean. An air blast drives out the moisture and moving onward all the time, the block disappears into the drying oven, a tunnel of heat nearly 40 feet long. At the other end, our traveller arrives dry and clean, ready for the assembling jigs. Meanwhile, presses are active. Top and bottom water tanks and many other parts are being made to keep the busy assemblers well supplied. Busy they are, these wizards of the soldering iron, for every joint must be secure, and every part firmly fixed to resist the vibration of years of hard usage on the road. The block is rigidly held in a special jig, and the bottom tank carefully positioned. Quickly, the soldering iron unites the two parts, rendering the joints completely watertight. Each operation is facilitated by the universal movement of the jig. When the radiator is swung round, the side member is fitted. Finally, the top tank is added. Smoking irons come and go as the radiator approaches completion. All these operations, all this care, is necessary to make just one radiator and anything up to 2,000 of these may be needed within the week to meet production requirements. The completely assembled radiator is subjected to an air test at 15 pounds per square inch whilst submerged. Any leak is quickly betrayed and the smallest air bubble cannot pass undetected. While the radiators off test are carried by conveyor into the drying oven, suppose we pierce a block with hammer and nail to see how really effective is this test. The first coat of paint gives the radiator a black protective luster and when this is dry, the unit, virtually finished, moves on to the final test, a test by water pressure, employing fully 10 pounds per square inch, 10 times the maximum ever likely to occur in use. A final paint. And the unit is complete, a radiator fully as dependable as the car on which it will be mounted to face with fortitude the many, many miles ahead. <laughs>